Well, welcome to Advent at Open Door. My name is Dave Nunn. I'm one of the leaders here at the church in Kettering. In a moment, I'll be handing over to our musicians who will lead us through our service together. And Adrian will be bringing the word of God to us. We'll also be lighting a candle together. And feel free to join in at home if you have a candle and a box of matches at the ready. Just a couple of in-house notices. Please don't forget, uh, Thursday the 17th at 7.30 at the Eden Centre, we'll be having uh, an in-person meeting. You're welcome to attend. You do need to sign up and we'll be grateful if you could do that as soon as possible, just in case we're overrun and we could do one on the Wednesday the 16th as well. But please sign up. The information is on the weekly letter. On the 20th, we'll be having our Christmas celebration service. There'll be no service Christmas Day, but on the 27th, on our normal Zoom, we'll be having a service together on Zoom. So it'll all be live um, and you're very welcome to join us for that. And then we're back together normally on the 3rd of January. We're looking forward to meeting with God and letting the light of God shine in our hearts together. So I'm going to hand over to the musicians now. God bless. Good morning. Um, the first song that we're going to sing together is uh, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Um, and I just wanted to share a few things. That, that This is a song uh, that gives us the perspective of the nation of Israel. So they're exiled, they're in captivity, they're crying out to God to send Messiah, the one whom the prophets spoke about of old. And they knew that when he came, that God's rule and kingdom would come on the earth. And so this is what we're also eagerly anticipating. We're anticipating the birth of Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. Uh, but just, just as we are anticipating the celebration of that, this, this season of Advent that we're now in, it's not just for that anticipation of celebration of what has happened, it's also for what is to come. So, as we sing this song together, let's, let's also look forward to the day when Jesus comes again, in power, and like the song says, puts death's dark shadows to flight for all eternity. Let's sing, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel.
The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the days of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. For to us, a child is born. To us, a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there'll be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this.
you came to be with us. You're the God who's coming again. When every tear will be wiped away. When every tongue will acknowledge that you are God. We get to know you now. We get to know you close. We get to know you as our best friend. right now and is to come. We love you, Jesus Christ. Well, welcome to our second Sunday as we continue our series, looking forward to the coming of Jesus Christ, the promises of Scripture we're going to be looking at today. We're eagerly awaiting the coming of Jesus through these stories, seeing it through the eyes of the readers of the Old and New Testament. I don't know if there were things that you did look forward to this year or that you're looking forward to in next year in this unusual season, eagerly anticipating crossing the days off, planning events, maybe have memories I do as a child growing up of visiting aunt and uncle down in Devon. There will be an anticipation of the journey and then on the journey there will be a roundabout or a monument or near the end there was a pub on the roundabout that let you know it was coming. We were nearly there. You know, the Old Testament is full also of that eager anticipation of something to come. We could say that Jesus Christ, the coming of Jesus Christ, is eagerly anticipated throughout the Old Testament. So when you're reading the stories, be asking, where is Jesus in this? You see, the Israelites, God's people, we heard last week from Dave, there was a promise to Abraham that your seed, your seed, your descendants will be a blessing to the whole earth. And the Israelites, they live with these two key promises. One, that there would be a kingdom rule. God would have a, a, a place. He, he would have not just the promised land, but the whole earth would be like a paradise. It would be a place of peace and righteousness where God's rule was perfectly expressed. That was one thing that burnt in them. The other thing, they had a promise that this paradise, this kingdom would have a king. He would be a king or Messiah, anointed one, of peace and righteousness. So a place and a person, the king, would be coming. So they were eagerly anticipating those. And so uh, the prophecy to Abraham in Genesis 12, that your son will be, uh, your seed will be a blessing to the whole earth, was living with them. Let's have a look at some other scriptures that promised. Uh, one is from Micah 5, verse 2. But you, Bethlehem, David's country, the runt of the litter, from you will come the leader who will shepherd rule Israel. He'll be no upstart, no pretender. His family tree is ancient and distinguished. Okay, from Bethlehem, this ruler, this leader is going to be coming. Then there's Isaiah. Isaiah is a prophet of around 800 years before Christ. He had quite a few prophecies. Words from God that spoke of this coming Messiah. Some of these will be very familiar if you've been in uh, any Christmas services. Isaiah 7 tells us that the Messiah's birth would be quite remarkable. Watch for this. A girl who is presently a virgin will get pregnant. She'll bear a son and name him Emmanuel, God with us. Then there's more signposts in Isaiah 9. Verse 12 tells us the Messiah will come from Galilee. But there be no darkness for those who are in trouble. Earlier he did bring the lands of Zebulun and Naphtali into disrepute, but the time is coming when he will make that whole area glorious. The road along the sea, the country past the Jordan, international Galilee. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. The Messiah was going to shine the light in Galilee. Remember the Galilee lake fishermen? You see what the picture of the scripture is building up. Then Isaiah wrote this uh, in chapter 9. For unto us a child has been born. For us the gift of a son. He'll take over the running of the world. His names will be Amazing Counselor, Strong God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. His ruling authority will grow and there'll be no limits to the wholeness he brings. He'll rule from the historic David throne over the whole promised kingdom. He had put that kingdom on a firm footing and keep it going with fair dealing and right living, beginning now and lasting always. 
The zeal of the God of angel armies will do all this. God's people were excited. This Messiah, this king, would be born into King David's line. King David had been a great king. They, they relished his memory. He had brought a lot of stability and strength to the people of Israel. So if the Messiah is like King David, this is a good king. Some other prophets, though, saw some things they didn't understand. Jeremiah 31, he saw the Messiah would be surrounded by weeping mothers. A sound heard in Ramah, weeping and much lament. Rachel weeping for her children, Rachel refusing all her solace. Her children are gone, dead and buried. Then there's Hosea in chapter 11, the Messiah in the echoes of the exodus out of Egypt. When Hosea says, when Israel was only a child, I loved him. I called out my son. I called out my son from Egypt. Different signposts all pointing to one who was to come, each of them catching a little glimpse but now we have the benefit of hindsight. We have the benefit of the New Testament. Someone has said the Old Testament is Jesus concealed. The New Testament is Jesus revealed. Unfortunately, when we have these signposts and wondering what do they mean, the New Testament writers, particularly in the Gospel of Matthew, he gives us some clues. He shows us how to interpret the signs. And we say, ah, so that's what it means. He gives us a history key and a geography key. And each time he says this was to fulfill what the prophets were saying, what they were seeing. So if you've read through some of the story of the nativity, you start reading Matthew chapter 1. And it starts with a whole list of names. Let me start it for you. It says, Matthew 1 verse 1, this is a record of the ancestors of Jesus the Messiah, a descendant of David and of Abraham. Remember Genesis 12? Abraham the father of Isaac, Isaac the father of Jacob, Jacob the father of Judah and his brothers, and on and on it goes. Verse 17, all those listed above include 14 generations from Abraham to David, 14 from David to the Babylonian exile, and 14 from the Babylonian exile to the Messiah. Jesus' family line starts with Abraham. Promise given to Abraham, your seed will be a blessing to the whole earth. Remember the promise? And also in the family tree, there is King David. Jesus is from that royal line, the son of David. Then we read in Matthew 1, the same quote from Isaiah 7. As Joseph considered this, he's found out his fiancée is pregnant. The angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit. She will have a son, and you ought to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All of this was, all of this occurred to fulfill the Lord's message through his prophet. Look, the virgin will conceive a child, she will give birth to a son. They will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. So there's some history being fulfilled. What about the geography? Well, chapter 2 of Matthew bursts out, Jesus born in Bethlehem, and Matthew quotes Micah 5. You Bethlehem, David's country, the runt of the litter, from you will come the leader. Now, do you remember how, Dave, uh, how Joseph and Mary ended up in Bethlehem? It was a decree of the, of the um, Roman leaders to return to your uh, city, your family city. It was a decree from a pagan rulers that brought Mary and Joseph into fulfilment of God's promises. Friends, that gives us great confidence that God fulfills his purposes for Open Door Church, for you and I in his plans. And so he can use pagan kings, he can use pagan rulers, he can use uh, uh, employers, he can use people around us that don't know him. He can fulfill his purposes very well and uh, we just need to trust him. Sometimes when these things, how come we're ending in Bethlehem when my fiance is pregnant, would say Joseph. Okay, so then we see that the wise men, they came from the east, but Jesus or his, and his parents, they flee to the west. They flee to Egypt through a dream because uh, Herod is chasing down the, the young boys. So Jesus grows up in Egypt. And then and as an echo of the story of Exodus, Jesus is led 
out of Egypt. It's like the salvation is coming out of Egypt. When we read the story of Exodus, we can see the story of Jesus there too. At the end of chapter 2 in Matthew, we see that Jesus lived in Nazareth. It was a place where they lived, but not before there was a time of weeping mothers as Herod brutally sought out infants and killed them, just as Jeremiah 31 has said. Matthew 4 explains Jesus lived in Galilee, where the people saw a great light. Christ the light was being shared abroad, starting in Galilee. And finally, though, there there were some words, prophecy, pictures, words that Isaiah brought in chapter 53. He says this, who believes what we've heard and seen? Who would have thought God's saving power would look like this? This servant grew up before God, a scrawny seedling, a scrubby plant in a parched field. There was nothing about him, nothing to cause us to take a second look. He was looked down on and passed over. A man who suffered who knew pain firsthand. One look at him and people turned away. We looked on him and thought he was scum. How does this prophecy fit with the one of the king and the kingdom? Well, the other gospels, Luke and particularly John, unpack that Christ the Messiah was also a lamb, the lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. The lamb of God who would come to serve mankind as a sacrifice. In another prophecy in Zechariah, the king would ride into Jerusalem on a donkey. The king that with the kingdom, the Messiah, would be veiled in humility. You know, years later, when the Son of God was born in Bethlehem, and the way celebrated Bethlehem, meaning the place of bread, later on, Jesus took bread in Jerusalem And he said, actually, this bread is my body. The one born in the house of bread, Bethlehem, actually says, I'm the bread. I'm the bread of life broken for you. Take and eat. This is my body. And remember the shepherds and the glory and the angels that sing? They said, the sign of this baby is you'll find him wrapped in swaddling clothes. Now, aren't all babies wrapped up in tight blankets, swaddling clothes? Well, the readers would know that around the hillsides of Bethlehem is where the sheep were, uh, they were raising lambs for the sacrifices in Jerusalem. And if you were a good Jew, your sacrifice of a lamb would be one that was very clean, one that was undamaged, one that was as perfect as possible. So the shepherds would need to take the new lambs and wrap them in blankets to keep them as safe as possible. Bethlehem, the house of bread, the one who broke bread, says, this is my body. Around Bethlehem, the shepherds with the sheep, the lambs, wrapped in blankets, swaddling clothes, the lamb for the sacrifice. It's Jesus hidden in the story, his sacrifice revealed to us. The Saviour, yes, the Saviour, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. You know, the Old Testament conceals, but the New Testament reveals. The sacrificial lamb, the bread of life has come. We want to urge you, want to encourage you, receive the bread of life from Jesus Christ. Receive the sacrificial work of his death on the cross, his resurrection that we now have eternal life. John 1 talks about that light has come into the world, the darkness has not overcome it. Friends, the light of Jesus is available for each of us to receive. Why don't we ask? Jesus, would your light come and shed abroad in my heart? Come and shine in my life. I surrender to your light, your truth, you're the way. Why don't we receive Jesus that was promised throughout Old Testament, now revealed in the New Testament as Christ the Anointed One. Why don't we bow our knee and receive him again as we look forward to the coming of Jesus at Christmas. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. John chapter one, verse five. God bless you.
Life came into the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. We invite you to pull up a chair and join us for one incredible journey. We are now back on route to Bethlehem. Look, a This modern retelling of a classic tale is coming soon. I think probably we'll get it done in December. It's the film audiences everywhere are talking about. It was fantastic. It was like it got so many performances from everyone. And it blew my mind. It was really cool. It's such a heartwarming, inspirational, true story. Special effects are amazing. It really brought the story to life. Go and see this movie. That's all I can say. It's the best film I've seen in 2020. I mean, it's appropriate for the whole family. And it is. And, and plus, it's five star rated. Five stars! Yay! I like six stars. <laughs> <laughs>
So, don't miss Open Door Studios. Nativity. Or you might regret it. This really upset me. This made me very, very cross. This is all getting very crossifying.